It's getting weird. In the thumbnail of these videos, you have these YouTubers superimposed, showing off their eyeshadow look, showing off their highlight, just posing while in the middle of either two victims in their thumbnail or two serial killers in their thumbnail. You know, that's just my opinion. Everybody got an opinion, everybody got something to say, everybody- Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby and today I'm going to be talking about true crime beauty YouTubers and how I think it is bizarre, for lack of a better term. So if you were not part of the beauty community in the years of 2015 till I would say about 2019, mid to late 2019, then you would not understand the hold that these people had on YouTube. So I think I first started getting into the whole like makeup YouTube when I was like, pfft, I don't know, 13? How old was I in like 2015? I want to say it was around like 2015, 2016. That's when I start really, really watching. And it was, it's kind of beneficial that I lived on a small island where most of these products that they were trying was not available to me because I would have been buying every single thing that these people were telling me to buy, which is a scam. And we deserve an apology because in the year 2021, everybody that was sponsored by all of these brands and doing all of these different things, recommending all of these different products to us, they're now going back and now we see videos like, hmm, did we like it or was it popular? While at the same time, I'm just like, you were the one recommending this to me in the first place. Thank goodness I couldn't buy it and I couldn't afford to buy what you were telling me to buy as a young child. But in retrospect, you really do realize how beauty gurus kind of ran YouTube for like the better part of four or five six years and now it is very very different now we're entering the age where they don't have the same ch like and I'm, and I'm not even trying to say that they don't have the same impact but the chokehold that there was literally like you could start a beauty a beauty channel creating a makeup channel uh, with tutorials and all of that stuff that was your gateway into YouTube like especially if you were white um, start a beauty channel and you will have like hundreds of thousands of subscribers in a couple of months when it came to, to YouTube back in 2017, 2016, 2017, 2018. I would say that was the heyday of when they had us in a chokehold. But now it's different and that's not necessarily a bad thing because things come and go all of all of the time trends change and then you're just gonna have to you're gonna have to pivot and find something else now in terms of the beauty community i think there are a lot of things that contributed to the downfall of it i mean if you're not already used to it why would you watch a 20 minute youtube tutorial about a product when you can get information on it on tiktok for in 60 seconds or less so there is that and there's also so many ways that you can teach me how to blend my eyeshadow there's so the well has run dry unless somebody comes up with something really really innovative and brands actually start putting out good makeup <laughs> again um it's just unless you already have an established youtube channel with people who are subscribed to you and people who want to see you there's just it's harder to start a makeup channel in 2021 than it was to start one in like 2017 or 2018. i think people were over the drama because every day it was a different thing happening. Um, people were, we were in a pandemic, so not a lot of people were buying makeup. Well, unless you're like me, who just likes to sit down and put makeup on my face for fun. Um, Cause I, I, I was, only in 2019 was I able to afford to even buy. And like, that's like drugstore makeup at that. Cause I can't even afford uh, Sephora makeup for the most part. So th there's a pandemic, people are not wearing that much makeup people weren't going outside a lot of people ju have just had it with a lot of these brands um who did not want to pay their employees during a pandemic and you have all of these reasons and 
the one that I mentioned before, trends change. And I'm pretty sure like in a couple of years, we'll be back to the whole beauty guru thing. But in the meantime, people need to pivot and people need to find something else to do. So what's been happening is that these like sit down videos are getting a lot more popular. And in order to pivot, you need to do it in a way where your original audience who subscribed to you for makeup content, they're not alienated by the new things that you're putting out, but you still wanna be able to achieve attract uh, a new audience, right? So the weirdest thing has been happening. Um, so we were getting back to like sitting down like before we knew about all of the sponsors, before all of the brand trips, before all of that. Uh, people are sitting down, people are doing get ready with me, people are doing story times while doing their makeup. And the, mo the strangest thing to me is the makeup and the true crime videos. When I started seeing this is when I started like looking at true crime and exactly what it is because I remember being a kid and seeing Snapped on Oxygen when I used to watch Bad Girls Club. I remember seeing Snapped on Oxygen all the time but it was never something that interested me. Um, I knew they were talking about cases, I knew that they were talking about people but in terms of actually watching the content that was happening like I didn't know and I think I was like way too young to know in the first place. So true crime is a genre where people are narrating actual crimes committed mostly in the forms of like serial killers and murders most of which are crimes that happen to women acts of violence that are done by men to women and there's people like this I for one have way too much going on in my regular life to go look up true crime stories about people getting brutally murdered and killed but it's something that people like to do and I was looking up and was like why do people like this so much and I guess there is this detective thing people want to solve crimes but at the same time it's very very weird and I'm gonna get into the makeup part and why I think it's very very bizarre but as a genre I think that true crime is very very flawed because in my opinion I don't think that the way certain information is presented I don't think it's very ethical I think that we forget about the victim in most cases beauty youtubers are looking for more content and now we get to the true crime and makeup I think that this is unethical I think it's bizarre I think it's weird because I've watched some of these videos these videos are sponsored these videos are monetized in the thumbnail of these videos you have these youtubers superimposed showing off their eyeshadow look showing off their highlight just posing while in the middle of either two victims in their thumbnail or two serial killers in their thumbnail I think it's so fucking weird that people can sit in front of a camera like what I am doing now and film videos talking about the details of gruesome killings of people most most of what I'm seeing is like because most of these true crime stories that get pushed to the forefront they're either about women who get killed why would you want to know about that and they're also there's also like a fascination with female serial killers as well so it's either one one or one or the other so you're you're sitting on in your thumbnail imposed between two serial killers or two victims how does that make sense? And the the reason why I have such an issue, I have an issue with true crime as a genre, it's very flawed in general, but my specific issue with this and why I wanted to f sit down and say something about it is because how can you tell me about the murder and the killing of a young woman while blending your eyeshadow at the same time? I feel there's this, like read the room. In looking up videos to film this video, there was this young woman and she was saying that yeah like we do this because we care about the victims no you don't no you don't because <laughs> you didn't get consent from the victim because you obviously can't and you also didn't get consent from their families this is a lack of consent that's going on where people are just sitting down and profiting off the pain and suffering of people in their families and these videos are getting maybe it's just me 
because these videos are getting millions and millions and millions of views so people are obviously entertained but the thing is how can you be entertained by the suffering of somebody else a lot of these stories from what I've seen some of it are unsolved cases so people are still grieving their families are still alive their families can still see what's going on and you find it suitable to sit down film a video about it get it sponsored while you are blending out your foundation that's what we're doing on YouTube in 2021 and 2020 and I honestly think that what these videos are doing is that they're desensitizing us to real issues so for example when you hear something just happened to somebody your first thought would be like oh my gosh what happened how did it happen and that's where we immediately go to and we don't stop to think about oh somebody just got killed we just immediately jump to the how why when and where and we don't stop to think that this was an actual person that this happened to so i think all these videos are just contributing to that because there's just like an extra layer of it almost seems disinterested in the actual vi victims not to mention the salacious titles that go along with it and I'm just like we have lost the plot and you guys have lost your minds. And also you need a certain level of tact when discussing these issues. What these YouTubers are presenting to you it isn't peer reviewed, it isn't fact checked. Like we're trusting that they do their research since they have a very very large audience and that's fine but at the end of the day it's not something that can be reviewed until it's out because most of the time they're doing it by themselves or even if they have a team around them who's doing the research for them but I don't know I just find it very very weird I find Netflix documentaries about true crime very very weird because these are still people at the end of the day these are people who had real lives who had real families and I just think that we're doing them a disservice and once again I'm not even saying that these people aren't talented because it takes a lot to sit down and research a video and research all of the details but at the same time you're coming on the internet to blend your eyeshadow while talking about something that people actually have to deal with um, there's just a cognitive dissonance that's there and I I don't know I don't know maybe it's just me maybe I just Maybe it's just me that has a problem with it because as I said before there are millions and millions of views on these videos so maybe it's just me but I think it's weird, I think it's bizarre, I think I think that you guys don't have concern for the victim and or their families. I think it's profitable so that's why a lot of people are choosing to do it right now and maybe that's what you guys want to do, that's what you guys want to do and people seem to like it but um, doesn't negate the fact that it's still weird. What is the point of this video? Um, I just want us to be more engaged about the things that we listen to on the internet and the things that we watch and the things that we invest our time with and I'm not even trying to be preachy don't even listen to me honestly like um go out and like watch and research and do do all of that on your own like don't don't just like take my opinion um for fact but it's still very weird and I just want us to be aware of the things that we're watching and aware of who we're affecting when we are watching these things because this thing these videos have like millions of views and you never know a family member of one of these victims might see it and get triggered because I know like I know these people aren't getting consent from the families because the way that they talk uh, they talk in these videos the way that you're trying to figure out what this killer was thinking you're not even thinking of the victim it's th the way that we address certain things it's just very very wrong in my opinion so yeah that was a video that might be my shortest video to date but i f i felt like i needed to say something and get it out so anyways thank you for watching subscribe if you want to thank you so much and i will see you in the next one whenever that one comes out um thank you bye bye